So if you have an OnlyFans mm -hmm. and you're a virgin yes. and you just explained to us that you're waiting for like some very high quality guy. I didn't say high quality. Oh, I really? said. <laughs> okay. So what, 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 what would be your ideal guy then? High level of chemistry. When you say high value, you're probably relating to income, height, things like Not that. high value, but I mean like it's high enough to sort of be your ideal guy that would be the guy that you would want to have sex with. I don't with. know if we have the same metrics of ideal. What do you mean by ideal? No, I'm just asking you. What would ideal be your you ideal, ideal that you would have want to have in a guy so the that you will have sex with them? For me, romantic chemistry is incredibly volatile. It's not based on any barometers of like, oh, he's in school, he has this career or anything So it could me. just be a random dude off the street? 100%. I am not hypergamous at all. I think you're probably way more hypergamous than you think you yeah, are. Yeah, I completely In fact, agree. you are so hypergamous, you won't have sex with a guy until the guy is the guy that you're looking for. Of course, and then if I had had sex with guys and then they were, you know what I mean, made less than me, and then you'd say, oh, because we broke up, it proves that none of those interactions counted, right? Can I so I can't really tilt the microphone <laughs> a little. That, tilt it. Other way. There you go. I think the very, I think the fact that you are a virgin right now just proves a point that you're high, like to a very high degree. Okay. The fact that I'm abstinent means that I'm waiting for someone richer than me. No, no. So you're, you're confused with hypergamous, hypergamous with this rich. idea that women are bad. Hypergamy doesn't mean women are bad. When did I say bad? When did I even imply that? Yeah, you are the one who's saying that he. You're you're putting words in his mouth. I'm just asking you're saying, what would be your ideal yeah. enough to get. But with where the did guy? this notion of women being bad come in no be, nobody because, said no one is saying that yeah you're you're at but you're saying to him you're putting words in his mouth about what he's going to say next after you have sex and that he's going to judge you and that's not what we're saying hypergamy is just an algorithm it's an evolutionary adaptation that women have it's not a negative or positive thing like you said it's not negative it's i'm not fine. sure if it's an evolutionary adaptation i think the reason women have uh historically been hypergamous is because they were barred from higher education so obviously the average man was going to earn more than them but by 2050 we're going to see a total reversal hypergamous, of hypergamy, hypergamy in the, we're going to see hypergamy, hypergamy during the plasticine epic was because of a bard from education in general that you can't really deduce anything from hypergamy historically because men on average have just made more than women but now women are out earning men hypergamy existed out before there was money hypergamy has nothing to do with money they just i'm just telling you studies have shown about that no you're, by you're, no, what you're doing what you're, no, what you're, here, let me explain what you're doing here is is you are conflating hypergamy with the values and the monetary set and status of today. Whereas when we talk about, well, when I've talked about her pergamy in the past, it's not, a, it's not a, a social construct. It's not something that's been created. It's something that is innate. I'm using okay. the, tr the current definition of hypergamy, which is that women date someone with a superior sociological or monetary background. Sociological. Socioeconomic background. Yeah, socioeconomic, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, because when we talk about hypergamy, it's not just about mon money. It's not just about uh, status. It's also about, like, is this guy arousing enough for me to want to get with? Is he a hot guy? Is he the dude that I want to get with because he's, he, he does it for me? That's what I was asking you. I'm not asking you, like, how much money does he have to make? I'm just saying, what's your ideal that that guy would get in there? What would, who would be the guy that would make you the OnlyFans virgin want to have sex with this guy? Wait, I'm confused. Can you clarify your definition of hypergamy? You're saying now that okay, someone... hypergamy is is very simple. It's alpha fucks and beta bucks. Okay, so it's it's is this guy arousing? Is he uh, is he sexual? Uh, is he uh, is he a good genetic um, match for me? Is he somebody who turns me on? Does he have a strong jawline? Is he six <laughs> foot tall? Is he you know got a V taper? Does he have a, a six pack abs? Does he turn me on? There's the arousal side of that, and then there's the beta buck side, which is the provisioning, protection, and parental investment side of it. So what you're focusing on right now is just that one single side. What I'm saying is, what combination of all that would be the guy for whom you would want to have sex with? Right, and I don't think I can give you, like, on paper, a list of traits. Like, I personally don't value height. I don't value physique. For me, like I said, romantic chemistry is incredibly volatile. So the last guy you chemistry. were with was, what, shorter than you, taller than you? I'm not going to get into details of it, but I've been attracted to guys who are my height or shorter. I genuinely don't care. For me, I'm hypergamous maybe in the sense that I want someone with you're Equal intelligence, but they, again, that's not, not a bad thing. It's not a bad that's, thing. It's not a bad thing. I haven't implied it's bad. I'm, I'm just rejecting the premise that I subscribe to hypergamy. It's not, okay, a, so, it's so, not a subscription. So, so, so let's just say you don't subscribe to it, but you're 
the supposition that you made previously that was that it was somehow cultural and it wasn't genetic. So we've put that to bed over 40 years ago. Okay, the, the study of evolutionary psychology, Dr. David Buss's first study in 1989, where he looked at 37 different cultures. In all 37 cultures, women wanted men taller than them. In all 37 cultures, men were more interested in casual sex than women. In all 37 cultures, women were more interested in men who were better at provisioning. This is not a fun, and these cultures had no attachment to radios, television, or film. They had no attachment to others. So Papua New Guinea, or Papua New Guinea, sorry, and, uh, and, and the Andes, they had absolutely no contact with each other. In all of these ones, men on average had 90% uh, higher upper body ma muscle and 50% uh, more lower body muscle. And we, when you look at all these things, these are genetic. There's, these things are not a function of culture. So that's a mistake to think that hypergamy is something that's created because men are, created some sort of patriarchy that created a hypergamous situation. That is not the case. Well, I think we were just using conflicting definitions of, of hypergamy. Okay. I was referring to socioeconomic sure. background, which I, is the in your in your discussion with him. That's but, easy but to in, do. In your, in your discussion with him, but in my discussion, because my my podcast is on evolutionary psychology, there is no evidence whatsoever that the concept of hypergamy comes from culture. Just like my heterosexuality does not come from culture, and what people are attracted to does not come from culture. We've proven unequivocally, unassailably, it is genetic. Now there's variations within a culture, what, what some people find attractive as others, but in all 37 cultures, they found facial, uh, symmetrical faces and signs of youth to be attractive. Height. An average, on, on general, men who are taller, not necessarily six feet tall, some places don't use the imperial system, but uh, not always, but generally men who are taller than women. And in all of these different cases, the men who are more competent, an, alle an allegory or an analogy for competency in 2023 is money, whereas there was no money during the Plasticine right. epoch. Right. Competency is now resources. referred to as money. Uh, the, the ability to garner, garner resources, that's what's most important. But there's no, your point to your point before, let me just stop right there. There's no science behind the, the idea that, that it's cultural. It's, there is none whatsoever. Because there would be some culture was, where it wasn't the case, and no such culture has ever existed or currently exists. Right, and you're using a very multi-dimensional application of hypergamy. Of course, people are attracted to competence. I was referring again to socioeconomic background. Competence can map onto a lot of different facets. It can mean earning more. It can mean competence in helping you as a woman take care of you, but that Correct. doesn't translate. Like, I kind of want you to give a more clear definition of what you mean by hypergamy in the multi-dimensional sense. Can I combat Go that? Ahead. Because, so you're saying that you think that socioeconomic is cultural. Like, that's standard for us, not just looks, not taller, or anything like that. Repeat the question. Okay, so say you're a woman who makes a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You would date a man who makes less than you because we're, we've bled that out of our culture, right? Women have the access to higher education, things like that, and we can make more money, correct? Yeah, we're seeing like a reversal of hypergamy, at least in the socioeconomic okay. sense, yeah. So, and that's your standard for yourself. Like, you think like you would not date a man who makes more than you, whatever. Oh, it's not that I wouldn't. I'm saying that's not like the cardinal reason I'm attracted okay. to someone is not based on wealth. So, you don't think it should be? I don't know about should be. I don't know about adding morality to it. I yeah. think you should do whatever you're, you know what I mean? You What's should pursue the, what, what you're what attracted is, what to. What is the cardinal reason for you to be attracted to somebody? That volatile sense of chemistry. What, and that's well, usually, what does that mean? Usually it's based on a shared sense of intelligence or humor. And if I find that in any person, for me to meet someone... So the I guy think, could yeah. be 400 pounds and you would still find him sexually attractive because he's as funny as Danny DeVito or Jim Carrey. Well, funny and smart. Isn't that what you're saying? Yeah. For me, it's about wits and humor. I see. So all the fat guys in the audience right now are like, like <laughs> man, I just got to brush up on my stand-up routine. I have found overweight men who I'm very attracted to because I find them funny. And some people might say that they develop that humor to mm. kind of make up for their looks. You realize they're looking at your Instagram right now. What? You realize the chat's probably digging up your Instagram right now. Right? <laughs> Good for them. Mm. But yeah. 